The one who loves walking will walk way more than the one who loves the destination. That's why I'm always motivated to study, because I've designed my studying technique to make it so that it's actually quite fun. Firstly, I want to tell you about a study that some researchers in the University of Stanford did. They just had some children, gave them some painting tools, and just told them to paint. They then assessed how motivated the children were to paint. And as you can imagine, they were quite motivated. After that, they decided to reward the children for their paintings. Maybe they gave them a golden star sticker or a piece of chocolate or whatever. They then assessed the children's motivation again. And as you can imagine, right after receiving the rewards, the children were happy, so they wanted to paint again. But guess what happened after a while when the researchers decided not to reward them anymore? The children didn't go back to their initial state of motivation when they just painted because they wanted to. Their level of motivation was way lower. At first, they painted because they wanted to. But then when the reward was introduced, it made it very hard for the children to be motivated to paint without the reward. But how does that tie into studying? Well, there's two types of people. One person says, well, I don't like studying, but I'll force myself to study. And if I'm successful, I'll reward myself with a donut or an episode of that TV show or 30 minutes on a video game or whatever. And the other person says, oh, I have to study math. Why not? I actually do enjoy it. Who's going to have more motivation to study? So of course, it's going to be the second person. While the first person could motivate themselves, it's just not ideal. Imagine studying and your only motivation being, let's say that episode of that TV show. While you're studying, all you're going to think about is that episode. All you're going to be thinking about is how excited you are to watch it and how you can't wait to stop studying and to go watch it. Let's say when you're doing practice questions, a part of your brain is still going to be focused on that TV show, meaning you're not 100% focused on the practice questions. So your studying sessions are not as efficient as they could be. But if you study because you enjoy it, just like those children that painted because they enjoyed it before the reward was introduced, you're going to study for much longer without the need to motivate yourself. And I could already hear you say, well, I don't really enjoy the subjects that I take. So how can I motivate myself to study without a reward? But don't worry, I'll teach you how you could pretty much gaslight yourself into thinking that you actually like the subjects that you study. But before I do that, the exam season is coming up, which means there isn't that much time to experiment with your studying technique. Every studying session you do has to be as efficient and optimized as possible. Which is why I launched a coaching program where you and I could talk one-to-one -to, -one to figure out how to optimize your studying technique to make it as efficient as possible so that you can get those top grades you're aiming for. If you're interested, click the first link in the description. Now, how does someone convince themselves that they actually like a subject? It's quite simple, but first we need to remove some brainwashing. I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, the general perception around school amongst students is that it sucks and it's boring and it's a waste of time. I was never taught that most of the subjects that I do learn in school actually hold a lot of value. I always hear people saying, when am I going to ever use Pythagoras theorem or the quadratic formula in real life? And there might be some truth to that. But people forget the bigger picture, which is for STEM subjects, for example. It's not about the subject itself. It teaches you problem solving. Think of the top entrepreneurs in the world, the richest people in the world. Why are the majority of them STEM majors and not business majors? It's because people usually get rich from solving other people's problems. And we first learn problem solving from school. To keep it short, just try to find the bigger picture of whatever subject you're studying for and keep it in mind when you study for it. If you're studying for science or math, for example, you could tell yourself, oh, I'm exercising my problem solving skills, which I'll undoubtedly use in the future. You might not use differentiation or integration or Pythagoras theorem in the future, but you will need to solve problems. And for essay based subjects, you could tell yourself, wow, I'm really increasing my eloquence and breadth of communication instead of just saying, oh, I have to write this really long essay. You also need to make sure that you're actually engaged when you study. Of course, you won't have any motivation to study if all of your studying is just passive. If you're only reading and highlighting and so on, you're going to be bored. And so you're going to associate studying with boredom. So now that you've created a link between studying and boredom in your brain, how can you then expect it to motivate you to study? Instead, make your studying engaging. And that usually means making it as efficient as possible. I usually just recommend going through some content quickly and then doing practice questions. And if you're not ready for practice questions, you could learn content through doing flashcards instead of just reading your notes. Flashcards are extremely important because they keep your brain engaged while you relearn the content. They're way better than just reading and highlighting a textbook. The one who loves to study will study more than the one who just loves the grade they're aiming for. So try to love studying, even if you have to lie to yourself to convince yourself that you actually enjoy it.